the battle between business owners and the Kentucky Board of Cosmetology. Hello everybody and thanks for joining us. I'm Doug Prophet. Those owners say they're experiencing racism and injustice every time an inspector walks into their business. Nail salon owners and for some the outcome has cost them everything. Now they're turning to lawmakers in a fight for representation. WHS 11 Focus Team investigator Shane McAllister shares their story. Inside every nail salon, you'll see some of the same things. Polish, pedicures, and people. People working hard to make ends meet. We're really just trying to make an honest living to put food on a table. Something salon owners and nail techs say has become increasingly more difficult because of the Kentucky Cosmetology Board. We feel like we are criminals. The feeling isn't necessarily new, but this fight in Frankfurt is. Hundreds of nail techs and salon owners showing up with signs spelling out the problems. As a community, this makes us believe that the board's agenda is to terrorize the Asian community in Kentucky. The nail community shared their stories. They also presented a solution, a new piece of legislation they say would remove barriers and level the field. The first request, exams offered in multiple languages. It doesn't matter whether or not they understand it in this language, it's that they understand it at all. And if that needs to be in a native language, that seems to be a reasonable request. Is that something the board would be willing to consider? I understand what you're saying. Then you should be able to answer with a However, simple yes or a no. If it was accessible through our exam vendor, potentially okay. yes. The vendor used is PSI and we checked. They do offer the exam in other languages. In fact, nearby Tennessee takes advantage of the option, offering the test in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. Next, the nail community asked for representation on the state board. Laws and regulations are constantly changing, but we are never informed. They want someone who has training and experience in their industry. Do you find something inherently um, difficult about including an additional member, this, a licensed nail technician? Other than the fact that it would make uh, it impossible, you know, uh, an even number board makes it very difficult to conduct business if there's any um, okay, then two, disagreement. Two, two members shall be licensed nail technicians. And that request, they hope, will lead to the next. Better regulation over board inspectors. Nail salon owner Leanna Wynn's hand shook as she read from her notes. The fear and anger visible. She believes because of rogue inspectors, livelihoods are on the line. It's unacceptable for an official to threaten to shoot anything. Get that dog, I'm gonna shoot. It stems from this incident when Inspector Jason Back, a former police officer, threatens to shoot an animal during a tense inspection earlier this year. According to the board's website, Back wasn't assigned to Jefferson County, but for some reason he was inspecting tippy nails in St. Matthews, finding 14 violations and fining them $13,000. The salon owners couldn't pay it. They say they were forced to close. The thing is, they shut us down without even giving us a chance to prove uh, our innocence. They also take issue with a recent board policy, requiring all payments to be made by money order. The community says oftentimes those payments get lost Lost, and then there's no paper trail. Lily Tran says her husband, a salon owner in Eastern Kentucky, mailed a $4,000 money order to pay a fine and then waited for the board to allow them to reopen. The wait lasted months. And during that time, she says stress took a hold of him. He had a stroke and they had to shut down. And we just keep waiting, waiting. They so hot like. The stories come from all over Kentucky, all pointing to a problem, a problem some lawmakers seem to recognize needs some reconciliation. I don't see anything objectionable to the five recommendations that they're asking for. Still, the fight is far from over, as this committee meeting only serves as a sounding board until lawmakers are back in session next year, leaving the men and women of the nail industry just hoping their businesses won't buckle between now and then. In Frankfurt, Shay McAllister, WHAS 11, on your side.